All right, everybody. Uh, it is Hypo Driver. I am back again. A uh, few days ago, I had posted up a new video doing a walkthrough of um, how to get Pi Toolbox installed with the latest version. And one of the things that motivated me to do was go back and actually update the workbooks that I posted up on Hypo Driver. Um, the ones I used in that video were a year and a half old. Um, one of the nice things that Cosworth has done is with the newer versions of Pi Toolbox, the light version, they've removed some of the restrictions. So in particular, uh, you can have more of these uh, worksheets down at the bottom um, and uh, also more displays per worksheet. So uh, what I did is go ahead, went ahead and uh, actually made a new version of these workbooks just for um, V12.3 and above. Uh, you'll see that there's two of them out there. There's a, a V2 workbook, PDR V2 workbook, which is for the, again, the newer car, C8 Corvette, um, the Cadillac Blackwings, and then a PDR1 workbook, which is for C7s, Camaros, uh, and uh, the old ATSV, CTSVs. So um, they're effectively the same. There's a couple small differences in them and some of the math channels. Um, they're in particular the V1 uh um, workbook has uh, some additional suspension related math channels that we don't have data for in the, the PDR2. Uh, also, there's just some little idiosyncrasies around, again, directionality of certain channels changing and me having to do some things to fix that up. So we're going to look at the PDR2 workbook today. Um, what I wanted to do here was give you all kind of a quick walkthrough to familiarize you with what is in this uh, workbook. So hopefully it'll help you get started. Um, I actually built this sort of from the ground up, taking my kind of workbook that I use the most. Um, I run the, the full on ultra version um, and just basically strip stuff out to get it down to the limit. So um, this has got pretty much everything I'm using day to day to do data analysis. So you're going to need to just like I showed in the, the getting started video, you're going to need to go through and, you know, these outings will be undefined. You'll need to you know right click and replace outing with your own. Uh, one thing you'll notice here is there's two tasks. Um, tasks are basically, you know, these groups of, of outings. And what I do is I've got one that's meant for comparing two different outings, or in some cases you can actually create two and two, load the two same outing blah, twice and uh, compare two laps from the same outing. This is meant for looking at a single outing. So um, it might be you just want to look at that last outing you did. Um, and you might want to just look at a single lap or look at all the laps in that outing. So we'll, we'll show you that as we go through, but you'll see that different uh, worksheets and different displays will target different tasks to kind of scope what they're looking at. So the first uh, really four tabs are going to be kind of similar to what you've seen me use in the past for doing uh, basically analysis looking for lap time. So this should look pretty familiar if you've seen some of my other videos. And what we've got here is we've got, this is the top outing and the compare laps is the bottom outing. And these are just kind of basic measures. So meant to do a quick check when you come off track, you know, how high did the coolant temp get? You know, 223, oil temp was 239. Max RPM, you know, make sure I didn't like zing it up to 8,000 RPMs on a downshift or anything crazy there. But there's a bunch of different measures in here to look at. I'm not gonna uh, kind of drill into all of them right now, but it gives you kind of a quick way to compare them. The next uh, worksheet is going to be your split times. So uh, here we've got the split setup and the laps we ran. These are both actually pretty short sessions. Um, but again, it gives you a way to say, okay, theoretical best lap, my, my sector times, and actually in particular compare the sector times between the two outings. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take like my, my last outing and I'll take my previous best in the same car at the same track and right off the bat, I can get kind of a good idea of how I'm faring against my best and where, you know, sector wise, I'm gaining or losing the most time. Now, this uh, this is really kind of where the bulk of the work happens for me. Uh, in this case, what I'm actually comparing is uh, one of these is the CT5 Blackwing. That would be the blue line. Uh, the orange line is actually the CT4 Blackwing. Uh, I was just looking at that already, so I figured it'd be a fun one to pull up. I'm, again, not going to dive into the comparison here. I'll probably do another video on that. But what you're seeing is 
Uh, right here, it's accelerator brake speed, delta time, and uh, rate of change of delta time. So again, this is that that line that uh, the magnitude of it really gives you a good way to hone in on where you're gaining or losing time. In this case, the the five was faster pretty much everywhere. Um, so so it's kind of a big big uh, lap time change. So uh, down at the bottom, we've got video from each lap. Uh, this weird thing where you see the video kind of dropped out, uh, that is some sort of bug. Sometimes you can just click around and it will come back. The other thing you can do is click on here, Alt 2, go down to Selected Media, unselect it, go back up to Available Media, reselect it, and it'll come back. So uh, weird idiosyncrasy. The other thing is make sure you have Maintain Aspect Ratio on for both the videos. So. Um, the other thing I added here was a little bar chart for oversteer angle. So this has become one of my, my favorite uh, handling you know, tools. And so what you can do here is actually, let's just click down around the apex of turn one. And you can look and see that, well, the, the CT5 has got you know about a negative six on that's actual understeer. The CT4 is just a tick over neutral here, but that's pretty good. Um, so it's kind of a way as you're looking through, you know, your session to kind of say, okay, how's the car behaving by looking at where those lines are on the bar. Uh, worth noting that this particular channel doesn't have a value if you're not in a corner. So like looking at it on the straights, well, generally looking on the straights, you won't see anything. What I also did is I, in order to kind of save uh, worksheets, there's another uh display over here. So you kind of just grab the line and drag it if you want to look at the other one. And this is, uh, again, more of a uh, kind of driver input look at things. So again, accelerator brake, steering angle. And down here is the G sum. So how many, you know, combined, how's the combined G that we're loading up? You know, part of what you'll see here is uh, I was driving somebody else's car with the four black wings, so I did not push it as much. I also had a passenger in the car. So you can see I'm not loading it up nearly as much, and that explains some of the speed difference right there. But you could take these, just grab this line, drag it back over. Oh, maybe if I grab the right line, drag it back over, and get back to your original display. Oh, come on, it's going to be finicky. I'll get back to that later. It's kind of tied these two together. Anyway, I'll come back and look at that later. And you also have the, um, you know, your map here. So you can drill in, see the GPS data, see the different lines. Here I missed the apex by about a country mile. And uh, the next worksheet, these are just some map with data overlays. Uh, I'll let you play with those and look at them. Oversteer angle, walk coast break corner state. So this is kind of where you're trail braking, where you're getting back on the gas and then G sums. This worksheet has a ton in it. And I did that to just give you a lot of potential things to look at. It's really designed more for you to pick one of them, expand it and kind of dive deep on it. It's also, as you'll see, see how they're all yellow. Those are all focused on the review lap. So this session can be any session. It doesn't have to be one of these. And like I said, typically this is meant to look at a specific session, say while you're there at the track. So um, you have the video, again, helps orient where you are uh, in the data. This is just your, your friction circle, but it's a friction circle that's color coded according to corner state. So the green is accelerating um, the red is braking, the orange is trail braking, and let's see, is I believe the blue is just steady state cornering, and actually the, the purple dots are high speed uh, cornering. So over here, uh, this was actually kind of a fun look at oversteer angle relative to lateral acceleration. So you've got these two clusters, basically left and right hand turns, also colored by corner state. So you could get an idea of, you know, where am I getting understeer or oversteer? So here you can see like, it's a lot of understeer. Um, 
while accelerating whereas you've got some oversteer here under trail braking which is good because usually you can modulate that pretty easily um i'll look at this one i don't think i'll go through all of them but this one is really designed to have a bunch of channels that if you need to you can actually hide some that are just distracting to you so the purple line here this is um effectively the curvature of the corner as you're going through it so as you see it coming down where it hits a point that's basically your apex and it gives you an idea of the shape of the corner the yellow is lateral g's so it's going to roughly line up with that um, but if you don't want to see that we'll just take that for instance click on corner radius and we will do h and we will go to lateral g's we do h and now all you're looking at is this is steering and yaw. This is accelerator brake. These two are just lines at positive four and negative four because I know for me, um, kind of exceeding those values on the oversteer channel makes me unhappy. Um, like I don't like the feel of the car. So here we've got a case where we've got a pretty big understeer going into turn one. And so that may be something I want to dive into deeper and say, okay, why do I have so much oversteer here, here, I'm sorry, understeer here, here, here. And so I can look at that. I can look at the inputs I'm making. So you can see what's happening as it's, as I'm transitioning back to the throttle. And maybe that's a driver behavior problem as opposed to a car handling problem. And then one more, um, very similar to the last one, accelerator brake, uh, steering angle. But here, what we're really looking at is uh, the difference in the rear wheel speeds. That's the orange line, um, or what appears to be some uh, wheel spin. There's going to be some of that just naturally with the wheelbase of the car, but just trying to get a feel of, am I seeing something as a result of spinning up the rear tires? The uh, next channel, this is just a bunch of different things with the wheel speed. So um, this one's actually got your individual wheel speed channels, accelerator, steering. This one actually has the wheel speed acceleration. So, um, you know, basically doing the derivative of the wheel speed to see, again, is, are the quick wheel speed changes going on. Uh, here is looking at actual slip in wheels relative to their um the other wheels and then this is again the rear wheel speed difference acceleration and braking uh again a couple things i'm looking for here so this one where i've got d cell so basically longitudinal g's relative to braking uh, percentage and so what you ideally want to have happen is a fairly straight line here where as you add brakes you get more braking to a point um, and what you don't want to have is you're adding brakes and you're not getting much decel or the braking reaches a point and you start flat and start losing decel and it starts actually not slowing as well. So um, this could be something like ABS intervention that you're seeing here. Down the bottom, uh, this again was kind of a fun attempt to look at acceleration versus different engine uh, values. So um, this is going to be um, oil temp versus acceleration. Let's actually look at this. Uh, we've got another one, which is intake air temp versus acceleration and uh, oil temp versus acceleration. So again, just trying to get an understanding of how those, those values uh, affect the way the car accelerates. And you also have a bar graph over here that shows those as well. And then this one is uh acceleration versus rpm so you know here we've actually color coded it by gears so again this is third gear in yellow fourth gear in green uh, fifth gear in blue and you can see a lot less acceleration in fifth or fourth or third but these these graphs are really much more useful to me if i look at the entire session as opposed to just one lap so if i go back to you know this task thing and i right click on it and I do select and I do all regions. Now I have a lot more data I'm looking at. I'm looking at every lap from that session. So, you know, looking at this, you know, D cell data, again, it's fairly consistent. 
Um, over here, I've got a lot more of the acceleration data to look at. And again, you can see uh, it's interesting, right? Third gear, high RPMs, the acceleration kind of holds, whereas fourth gear, it starts to tail off. That's likely drag. And of course, fifth gear, I'm only using it here um, you know, in relatively high RPMs when I'm shifting from fourth into fifth. And then this one is a, is a classic uh, gear chart just showing uh, RPM to speed. And you can clearly see the different gears uh, in that chart. So just some interesting things to take a look at. Uh, the tire chart down here is a table that has uh, really the, the basic numbers you're going to see coming out of the, the tire pressure and tire temperature sensors in the PDR. Uh, it's worth noting the tire temp is basically extrapolated from the temperature of the CPU in the TPMS sensor. So it is not you know, directly measuring the tire in any way, but it gives you a relative measure of like the, the temperature of the air inside the tire. And then these are fun. I, I saw these in one of the many classes I took. And here we're measuring lateral acceleration against tire pressure and tire temp on all four wheels. So left front, right front, left rear, right rear. And, you know, if you see something here, like at a certain pressure, I see much more lateral grip. Like here, it's right around this, you know, 30, Mm, right around the 36, 35 ish, it starts to tail off here as I get up to 38. You know, that can give you an idea of what PSI uh, for tire pressure is going to give you the most grip and also some idea of how it relates to temperature. And then the last one here, this is really about engine health of the car. Um, so, again, here we have uh, oil pressure against RPM. You know, it's with the, the variable. Uh, speed oil pump. It's not quite as straightforward as it used to be. Normally you'd want to see the oil pressure build with RPM, but here you can see it. It's kind of in this 35 to 45 range, even at high RPMs. Um, what you're going to see is, what you don't want to see obviously is any, any big dips, right? You don't want to see it dropping down to like 10 or 15. Over here we have um, oil pressure versus oil temp. And um, I've actually tried to code that against RPMs here. So, you know, these darker colors, if you, or rather um, darker, the orange and the red are like higher RPMs, yellow is higher RPMs. And here you're looking as the oil temp climbs, the oil pressure actually goes down some. That's to be expected as it thins. And then over here is, is a look at oil pressure versus uh, G sum again coded against RPM. So again, what you're looking, what you're making sure you don't have is a high, uh, you know, high G load, uh, low oil pressure situation. So I thought this were all interesting. Um, not something I would use day to day. It's more if I was trying to troubleshoot a problem. Um, but I thought this would be useful to show you and, and for you to have as a, a tool to use on your own. So. Hope this helps get you all kind of started and oriented with the, the new workbooks. Again, if you have any questions, post, post them up in the comments and um, enjoy. Thanks.